Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Porn Star Confessions. Today I've got the one and only Morgan Thick. Welcome, hey. Morgan. Oh, thank you very much. One and only, yeah. So, I mean, one and only for quite a few reasons. I mean, number one, your body is. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Nothing short of impressive. Thank you very much, yeah. It's a uh, work in progress. So, how old are you, though? Uh, I'm about to be 37. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. Almost to my upper 30s. <laughs> Damn. I'm, based on your physique, I thought you were going to say, like, late 20s. I wish, yeah. Um, I'm almost dead. <laughs> so, where does your story begin? Like, what was it like for you growing up, all that good stuff? Uh, my story begins in like small town, Nebraska, like middle of nowhere. Nobody oh. even knows. Yeah. Um, I think my graduating class had about 50 people. So it was interesting. Like, I don't really consider my upbringing to be unnormal. Um, it was pretty mundane. Like as far as like, I grew up in a predominantly farming town and it was toxic as fuck and there was misogyny everywhere and it was also very white and for me it was just kind of necessary to escape that and kind of explore like the world and other cultures and so that kind of was my motivation to get out <laughs> But how did you get out, though? Because a lot of the times people that are born into that level of small town never leave. Yeah, they get stuck. Um, you either become uh, a farmer doing what your family has done for generations, or you kind of embrace the complacency and uh, maybe go to a state college. And then, I don't know, you live like an hour or two away from your family. Yeah. But um, for me... Uh, I joined the the Navy and um, that kind of allowed me to get out and explore and meet other people from other states and other countries. And uh, then I got to explore other countries. So that kind of allowed me to, I don't know, develop, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that'll get you out of the small town. That's for sure. Oh, for sure. For free. <laughs> All you have to do is sell your soul. How long were you in for? Oh, I was in for like seven and a half years. I usually say eight, oh. but um, yeah, it was seven and a half years and decided it wasn't for me. Uh, again, just another system of toxic masculinity. Yeah? So I kind of uh didn't see the benefit of staying in it though like now i kind of see the benefit like i'm about to be 39 technically if i would have stayed in i would be retiring at that age and then that's like a pension forever um yeah. but 20 25 year old morgan did not see that <laughs> So were there, obviously there had to be some good things that came out of it though, right? I mean, the military is definitely beneficial in terms of like, like I said, like it gets you out of where, whatever system that you came from, yeah, like whatever you are escaping. Um, it also provides like structure and they teach you like basic needs in terms of like providing for yourself and um, kind of being on time and like those things that I don't know, like maybe you learn in college, but I definitely learned it in the military. Um, of course, there's always like the post benefits, like they pay for your college, you have access to the VA medical system afterwards, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, there are definitely benefits. Like I would never not tell someone to join the military. I think it's definitely beneficial. It's how you use it to your benefit yeah yeah no, that makes sense yeah so going back in time well first of all were you out 
were you, you were in the military or no? No. Uh, well, kind of like, mm, it was hard. Like for me, I didn't really come out until I was 19. And then, um, so I was probably in the military for about like a year and a half when I finally came out to my parents. Um, and I was probably like still telling myself like, oh, it's a phase or, oh, I'm bi or doing all like the internalized like shame kind of like this is a uh, this is hopefully going to end and someday I'll get the white picket fence with uh, two kids and one dog and um, just like my dad wanted. Uh, but I would say probably by the time that I got out of the military, I was like a full fledged homosexual. <laughs> How did your parents react when you told them? Uh, my mom gave me the, the, I've always known and kind of just, um, <laughs> waiting for you to tell me, uh, which I, I kind of appreciate. Um, and then my dad, uh, I think my dad probably handled it a little more difficult. Like, again, being from Nebraska, to him, I don't think that he really saw, like, a life for someone who is queer, yeah? Like, there's HIV, and there's oppression, and it's really not, like, an ideal life in his eyes, I don't think. So for a lot of that... I think it was probably challenging. Like, there's no animosity there. It wasn't like, get out, I abandon or I disown you kind of situation. It was very kind of like, okay, um, and now we're never going to talk about it again. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't that he necessarily had a problem that you were gay. He just felt like it might hinder your chances of being happy. I mean, that's my interpretation. I don't know. Like, in true Midwestern form, anyone who's from remote Midwest, like it was just a very like, don't talk about it situation. Like, oh yeah, we love Morgan and we accept Morgan, but let's just not, we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. No, yeah. I get it. Yeah. So what did you do after you got out of the Navy? Uh, I wanted to be really gay. So I separated from the military in like central california like by fresno um that's where i was stationed and i moved from fresno to uh san diego because i wanted to go to college i wanted to be gay and san diego seemed like well la seemed like a lot and san francisco was really expensive so san diego kind of sound like or felt like the the natural oh, move. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So I and I've been here ever since. <laughs> nice. What yeah. did you study in college? I did psychology. Oh. If you don't mind me asking, what attracted you to that? Um, <laughs> I have a theory. Uh, so well, I've heard like that there were um studies, or maybe it's just kind of like a general consensus of among like queer men who grew up in the 90s like in order to cope with trauma and kind of like the oppression of being made fun of in school in order to kind of like disguise that whatever someone told us that we were good at we kind of just we played into that role or we did whatever we could do in order to like distract from like oh i'm gay like don't look over here. Look at how good I'm at math or look how good I am at a list. I'm a listener. Like I'm a really good friend or something like that. So at one point somebody told me like, Oh, you could be a therapist. Like you're really good at giving advice or you're a really good listener. And so I kind of just went with that. Like I believed it and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what drove me to psychology. I also love, I do love helping people. I do love um, kind of, being a like unbiased third party to assist in providing like alternative like mind frames or whatever nice frame of minds yeah yeah no a lot of the times people when they're neck deep in shit can't look at things objectively 
No. And I mean, I can't take my own advice. Oh, so I definitely is. Res- I respect like going to therapy and therapists and what they offer. So, um, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So how did you go from that to porn? Uh, so I started doing porn in like mid 2019. Um, I found myself in a situation where I needed to then supplement, uh, um my current husband um wanted to go back to school so in order to allow him to fo- fo- fully focus on that um i needed to make income or at least like what i consider to be like additional income on top of like what i do um for like everyday work but um yeah i just I've always kind of been interested in porn. Um, I was kind of finding myself very like motivated by like the sex work is work movement that was going on uh, then um, in the late like 2018, 2019 timeframe. Um, so I kind of just embraced it and was like, oh, well, I'll see how this goes. Like, I don't know if I'm actually going to be good at it or if I'll make any money, but it's an option and it doesn't require any more schooling or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a bunch of questions came up there. So okay. <laughs> how, how long have you been with your husband for? Uh, we've been together since mm, I moved to San Diego in 2012. So we started dating like the end of that year. So like say January, 2013. So roughly about 10 years, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Good for you. Oh, thank you. How'd you guys meet, if you don't mind me asking? That's a really good story, actually, as well. Um, So we met because when I moved to San Diego, like I said, I wanted to be really gay. Um, And I also thought that I was really hot shit. So I wanted to obviously become a model. Um, and I did so by going around to all the little gay stores and boutiques and being like, can I be um, in like one of your catalogs or can I model for you if like you do like a, a runway show or just very like local kind of whatever. I just wanted to like get known. Yeah. Um, be very much in the scene. And I'm not really a good dancer. So I knew that I could be like a go dancer. Um, so that was kind of where I found myself. Uh, he was managing a, one of the local, uh, underwear, like bathing suit, lube, sex toys, whatever kind of store. Um, so my first interaction was him, with him was actually like pride 2012. Um, I modeled for his store. They were doing like a series of bathing suits for a pride event. And um, for the for the runway, they had us take out like the cup insertion that like gives you this seamless bulge because they wanted to see dick print, yeah. Um, and they had us take them out and we threw them in a bucket. And we did the modeling show and everything went off without a hitch. Um, but a couple of days later, I got a call because apparently my bathing suit um, came back with no cup inserts. Uh, and they wanted to know why I had taken them. <laughs> um, so our first interaction was him accusing me of stealing from the store. Which, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so- um, Quick question. Did you have the physique then that you have now? Um, kind of. Like, I've always had, like, a pretty proportional physique. Uh, I guess Midwestern, corn-fed, whatever you want to call it. Um, I definitely didn't have the size. Like, when I moved to San Diego, I probably weighed, like, one, 150, 160. Um, so I've definitely put on a few pounds since then, but... Yeah, proportionally, I was probably pretty relative. I still had, like, all the body hair. Um, I was adventuring into facial hair. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So he he calls you up, basically accuses you of stealing. Yeah. How does that turn into a ten year marriage? Uh it didn't. We didn't talk for the longest time because uh he was actually also doing um I don't know if you're familiar with like Timoteo or Cell Block, like that clothing line out of LA. Yep. Um so he was doing uh he did like a photo shoot for their new line that summer as well and i wanted that photo shoot like that was going to be my ticket because that was like the only clothing company that i knew in la um and he got that like exposure that i thought i deserved (laughs) very entitled um so we actually didn't talk for probably that whole summer and then um it wasn't until that fall when I was actually, um, I contracted like HIV and I went through kind of like uh, that emotional like roller coaster of um, like, what am I? Or like, am I trash? Like, can I cope with this? Like, and so I reached out uh, to him in order to kind of like, cause I was referred to him just because he was like, a really nice person in the community yeah like in general um and he seemed to be kind of well versed within like sex sex and sex world and um so we had coffee one day and it kind of just like flourished from there oh yeah okay um question though like do you know how and when you contracted hiv if you don't mind me asking uh yeah it was from like a past relationship that uh wasn't too great i'll i'll leave it at that gotcha and there was undetectable back then right or no so i got put on to medication right away and um yes there was i think they had just started rolling out like the one pill um once a day kind of regimen uh so it was fairly quick i think it was like within the first month that i was undetectable but um yeah it was not it was definitely traumatic but not like i wouldn't say that i went through some of the pain and like mm, like physical pain or like sickness that a lot of people experience. Yeah. How did you like walk me through the process of like coming to terms with that? Uh, I'm a couple sure of bottles of, of Jack maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. For me, the process was very much like sharing the experience um, in order to cope with that. Um, so I'm I'm almost positive like my friends were very annoyed with me by the time that I actually did cope with it because everybody that I encountered I had to like tell them <laughs> about the situation and what happened and I don't know it was it was very like it, I feel like it was good for me but it probably wasn't the best like I did therapy and I did um I did have like a really good support group, um, which I kind of attribute to helping me cope. But I, yeah, it was definitely. How do you find a support group? I'm asking just in case anyone watching this is, you know, going through that. Yeah. So um, my close friends at the time, uh, they were really supportive of me. So that was kind of like my base is. Um, the foundation the lead the way foundation here in san diego was also like very crucial in getting me on medication setting me up with a counselor um and kind of walking me through like what it means to be hiv positive and to still like live like you are still able to live a normal life um so those two things were pretty like I would say like the fundamental basis for my uh, support group. Yeah. I get it. So you guys start talking, you hit it off. Yeah. When did you get married? Uh, We got married in May of 2021. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Congratulations. Thank you. That's, yeah. We did like a really Oh sorry. I was gonna say that's a really long relationship. Uh yeah. Especially in the gay community. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know. I mean it it we've been through a lot, like uh in terms of um our relationship and I think that we've both seen each other kind of like in our highs and our lows, yeah. Um so that definitely allowed us to develop a more like robust relationship and kind of um just appreciate what each of us have to offer more. So like he decides he wants to go back to college. Mm-hmm. You needed like had you ever thought of doing porn prior to that? Oh, completely. Yeah. Like I did, I did like a, when I first moved to San Diego, probably like early 2012, I did like a, I think it was like a solo masturbation scene for Jacked. I don't know, some like random website that is in San Diego that probably doesn't exist or I don't know, the guy paid me like $500 for it and I have no idea. So I'm, I, every once in a while, like someone randomly messaged me and be like, oh, you're that guy from this whatever jack off video. Da, 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 da. I still have it. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. I do actual porn now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I'm curious, how did that conversation come about? Because I'm assuming your husband's not in the industry, correct? Uh, no, but he's kind of, I mean, He knows me and he knows that like I like sex. Um but we had we were already um kind of talking about like how we would fundamentally make it work if he were to go back to school. Like we already knew like there had to be something in order to supplement an income and we don't want to live off loans like forever. Um so it was kind of and I think OnlyFans was just starting to like really kind of like be a thing that people were taking serious. So I kind of just jumped on that bandwagon. Okay. Yeah. So you totally cool with it. Yeah. I mean, we, we even before I started doing like sex work, um, like we were in a non-monogamous relationship. So the, which that, does not mean like there isn't a conversation that needs to happen before you make the jump into like sex work. Um, cause that's its own stack of like hurdles. Um, but it was more of a smoother transition from doing like a non-monogamous relationship where we're both like actively engaging in sex with other people, um, to like me doing porn. Yeah. It wasn't like, a sharp left. Okay. More like a roundabout. Were yeah. there ever any issues like jealousy or anything? Um, so like a big issue that comes up is like uh within doing um like OnlyFans work or even like as a content creator, like e- there is the need to kind of like socialize and um, engage with people and network and go to events and take pictures. And um, so previously prior to, or prior to sex work, like we had discussed like sex is kind of the limit. Like you engage with someone, you have sex, and then that's kind of like the, that is the line. Yeah. Like everything else is not allowed. So that was kind of like, the hurdle the big hurdle that we had to kind of get over in order and for like what that meant for me and then also to be fair like what that meant for him yeah like what was he allowed to do as well in order to um like make everything very fair on both sides yeah oh and what kinds of things do you guys do what do you mean to accomplish that what do you mean like conversations or uh you're talking about like sex in general yes sex in general like so obviously like i'm engaging in like 
porn sex and everything like that and then uh he's able to like hang out and do like coffee dates or um food or i don't know go to like a fucking farmer's market with somebody and it's fine (laughs) yeah all right it definitely like was interesting kind of like for myself because me personally like i consider everything that i do work so it's in this very work bubble whereas when we initially kind of talked about it i thought about what he is doing as very social yeah so it's it's kind of like it frames it differently for me but i i can see like from his point of view like i'm going to like vegas to the gay vns and i'm just having fun or i'm going to la for a weekend and i'm just going out and i'm having so much fun with all these people and everything like that whereas for me kind of i mean to some degree it is very much work yeah yeah no i get it because i can see it from both points of view yeah I can absolutely see it from your point of view that it is just work. And whereas with him, it's almost kind of like playtime. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That I would mean, be it doesn't hurt that work can be fun, but. Yeah. It's just changing your perspective. Yeah. No, that's true. So. All right. I assist everyone. Okay. Well, your verse, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. You can have sex. So two answers, one for top, one for bottom. You can have sex in only two positions for the rest of your life. You never get anything else. What positions are you picking and why? So only two positions. like So bottoming doggy is one position? Yeah. Okay. I would probably pick uh hmm, I would probably pick missionary in both like top and bottom position. Um only because like I love kissing, so kissing is huge for me, but as a top I also love to see like that I'm giving the other person pleasure. <laughs> so yeah. that like face melts kind of like this feels amazing look that bottoms get like that to me is everything that i need um but yeah i also like that position like because a lot of times like tops think that they are like giving it to you so hard and i'll just give them like a wink yeah (laughs) like okay go harder daddy Yeah. I like it. Yeah. You didn't break the cycle. So far, every single person has said missionary. Oh, really? Every single one. I uh, I mean, yeah, I, I guess it's kind of universal. It could also lend to, like, maybe heteronormative activity in, like, our brains, but... I don't know. I mean, I I get why you would think that, but for me personally, it's everything you described. It's being able to see my partner's face, the reactions, you know, it's a lot more intimate. You can kiss. It's it's the best position, in my opinion. I mean, I I fully agree. Like, it, it just allows for a lot more to go on in my mind than, like, doggy or any other position <laughs> yep. especially if like you don't have like the best like hip mobility or <laughs> anything else yeah everything else just becomes like maybe like a five minute thing and then you're like well fuck what am i gonna do now <clears throat> no you're absolutely right you are absolutely right so how has doing porn like because you've been in and out for what um, Five years, I think. Since yeah. the middle of 2019, yeah. yeah so, yeah, so almost four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, four. So how has it positively impacted your life? How has it negatively impacted your life? Um, I would say it's positively impacted my life by uh, 
probably just like opening my brain to kind of like sexual opportunities. Yeah. Just being like more um, aware of kind of what sexual activities like I like and what I don't like. Um, but also exploring um, my sexuality in general and kind of like, I probably never would have like explored sex with maybe trans men or trans women, or I never would have done like a group sex orgy, or I never would have like um, tried being like a cum dump, yeah, for several guys, yeah. I may have wanted to like fetish, like I, I fantasized about it, but I probably never would have put myself in that position unless I had kind of like the confidence to do or embody that role um, because quite often it is like negatively like stigmatized as something that's I don't know not deviant but just I don't know dirty <laughs> yeah um, but I would say like negatively like sex work is toxic as fuck like there you are 100% oh, putting yourself on display all the time um not only that but the culture is very much shifted in a means of like you are just something that i can monetize yeah you are looked at as a follower account and a like can you retweet for me because then how many people are, are going to see my video kind of thing um so it very much dehumanizes the act of sex. Uh, and then you add in like um, the aspect of like people like interacting with you and there's no real like chemistry. There's no real discussion up to leading up to like filming. It's kind of just like you walk in and get hard for me. <laughs> It, it becomes very much like studio work kind of like and even maybe less so it's just i don't know um so yeah i would say that's probably my negative thing about sex work i'm not saying all experiences are like that like i definitely have um had some really like really good experiences and i've kind of learned along the way to uh just monitor myself and know like what situations I feel comfortable with and being really honest and open with myself about like mm, this doesn't feel good so I don't think it's gonna work I'm sorry there's a million other people <laughs> um yeah have you ever had that happen have I ever mm, have the I last ever had thing you a situation where I just didn't feel comfortable and I, yeah. um, I've had situations that I walked away from thinking like, mm, I probably won't post that because I, I definitely wasn't having fun and I did it because I felt I had to rather than I wanted to. So yes, I would say that there have not, I don't think there have been any situations where I walked in and I was like, mm, nope, not my jam. Bye. <laughs> like I'm not that much of a cunt, but, uh, I, I feel as though like I am confident and comfortable with myself that if I dev did ever find myself in a situation like that, yeah, I would probably do that. Yeah. I'm, Glad you brought that up, though. How do you say it? Where you went along with it because you kind of felt like you had to, if you could elaborate on that. Completely. Like, uh, especially because, like, as this industry, whatever machine grows, like, I'm sure people that are just getting started kind of feel, or maybe... Maybe I'm putting words in their mouth, but I can only assume that a lot of people feel like they have to play along with, like, quote unquote, bigger fish. Yeah. Um, people who have bigger followings or people who are more established in order to, like, gain traction. Yeah. Because the, the community is so saturated now. Like, there are so many people who are doing content that 
I can't even imagine like what it would be like to start now unless you have a 12 inch penis. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like I, I, if I started now, like I throw, throw a stone and hit like a hundred, like of me. I don't know. That's, that's how I kind of see it. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like I try to offer like different perspectives and all of that, but physically like I am white, I am muscular, I'm generic. Yeah. Like there's nothing, I don't know. I mean, I, I think your brand offers a bit more than that, but I definitely see where you're coming from. And I'm, Glad you mentioned that, though, because you're absolutely right. I feel like a lot of people maybe don't want to shoot with someone or maybe aren't okay with the type of scene. But like you said, they move forward with it because the person has a follower count. So they need the exposure. They yeah, think they need the exposure. Of- yeah. Yeah. They think they need the exposure. A lot of times, though, I feel as though... Um, what ends up happening is like fans just go to that person. Like they already know, like this established person has like, they have everything that the the fan wants. Yeah. Cause I don't know. People are more likely to take a risk subscribing to someone who is established and has like something that they've already seen, or I don't know, then like a new person. Yeah. Basically, unless you have a 12 inch penis, like that's, I, I believe it. That makes sense. So yeah. what made you, you had said that you walked away and you're like, uh, I really don't think I'm going to post that. Why in those situations? Uh, in those situations, the I chemistry just kind of. chemistry was off or. Uh, yeah, like the chemistry was off or um, I didn't, I don't know, maybe like in the moment I was kind of overworked and I didn't feel like I gave like 100%. Um, or maybe I felt like I was kind of adhering to some standard or trying to embody some kind of personality that I felt like mainstream porn needed to see in order for like the video to hit. And it doesn't read well on uh, camera, I, especially if like you're forcing it or it feels awkward or forced. And for me, I don't like that. It doesn't feel comfortable and I don't really want to put that out into the world. So yeah, in those situations, I would just, I mean, I always exchange content, um, cause that's fair, but I don't know that I would necessarily put it out there for everyone to see. Yeah, I get that. And one thing you had mentioned a while ago was that when you started, you know, it was like the whole sex work is work. I'm wondering, has your view on that changed or intensified when you first started compared with now? Uh, If anything, it's intensified. Yeah, if anything, it's intensified. Like, I started out with the thought that sex work is work like this is valid in terms of like it is work but i don't think that i quite grasped how much work actually is required of doing like only fans <laughs> you are like the puppet the director you are the videographer you are you are the person doing makeup, the hair, the, you are everything, yeah? And in order for it to come together, like there needs to be some kind of orchestrated uh, events where the stars align and the barometric pressure is exactly zero that you kind of like strike gold. Yeah. yeah. So, your average not solo video but your typical collab yeah how much time would you say goes into making one single video like uh, from the getting ready from talking to the person and you know setting it up and editing and posting and everything 
it just depends like a lot of time because I live in San Diego a lot of people don't come through San Diego so a lot of the time I have to go to different cities in order to like film with other people um every once in a while like people will come through San Diego but it's not LA and the fact that LA is so close people would rather probably go to LA which I understand yeah LA is more fun um San Diego is very chill very kind of laid back um people don't want to come to vacation here but uh uh I would say like it can range from uh maybe like a day to like I've had well I still have people that I've talked to like when I originally started doing OnlyFans that I still talk to today but have not yet had a chance to film with so if that kind of gives you like a range I don't know like I, I would say probably the average is probably like a week yeah a week worth of work um in terms of like talking filming editing scheduling done yeah um yeah. but yeah it just it varies you know yeah no the reason i asked that is like the reason why i started this show is i wanted to dispel a lot of the myths you know regarding sex work and porn stars because you know people think like oh you just push record and oh my god then the video shot and then you click upload and that's it and like yeah you know or it's like yeah no not even not even like no not even close like there's so much that goes into you have to like self-promote like and that requires like a lot of time on your phone in order to kind of network and a lot of people do like retweet for retweet um on twitter or they'll do shout outs on only fans or other like on instagram um like my husband is constantly telling me like that i need to relax but the truth of the matter is like for the last four years no i have no time to relax like and if i do i pass out like i'm just dead tired like i am constantly like a ball of anxiety thinking of like 10 other things that need to happen in the next hour or the world will explode <laughs> so did you have all this anxiety prior to doing sex work or is this new uh i always been like an anxious like nervous kid like I used to give myself migraines just from worrying about it worrying about nothing that was in my control um part of me believes that's a product of just being a kid of the 90s but also like my family was um like not as reliable so I kind of I stressed over nothing that I was in control of yeah so um but yeah, I think I was, I've always just been an anxious person. Um, I did cope with it like poorly for a period of time in my twenties um, with like copious amounts of alcohol and just, I was that like gross, disgusting, like messy, dramatic, emotional, mess at 2 a.m. just kind of like that nobody wanted to hang out with and all always always apologizing for it the next day so um thankfully i figured my shit out and went to therapy but yeah i would say i've always been anxious what brought you out of that period of time <laughs> honestly i was just tired i was tired of going out every weekend and doing the same thing in the bars and getting wasted and waking up hungover and then i don't know it, it just felt very disconnected in terms of like needing some kind of lubricant in order to be social um it just felt very not involved so in order to break that i kind of just stopped going going to the clubs and drinking in excess and that was kind of around the same time that like Aaron and I were getting to know each other so in that regards it kind of worked out um because 
he didn't get to see like the mess that I was, which is nice. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I don't know, just a shift, I guess, in my twenties, just out partied myself. So do you say, so do you say you got kind of sick of your own shit? Yeah. I mean, I was tired of being the guy that everyone apologized for and yeah. I was just, yeah, I don't know. I, I really wanted to find out like why I was so emotional and why I was so like dramatic. Why was I always having to cope with alcohol and kind of like, yeah, just do the work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good for you. I mean, God, no, we all make mistakes in our 20s. God oh, knows I made mean, <laughs> So, yeah. So you don't go to bars, clubs, none of that anymore. Um, I still do every once in a while. Yeah. Like I still have like, I still have like four bottles of wine, like in my wine cooler right now, but I'll have like a glass maybe every once in a while. Yeah. And then if I go to bars, like, I'll do a few shots, but it's not anything that's going to get me like overly intoxicated or I'm not going to be like losing my shirt on the dance floor because that's what I did every time. So yeah, it's just, it's just at the 30 year old or the, I guess the 37 year old version of me is a little less, I say fun, but it's, it really has nothing to do with fun. It's just, um, just You're more of mellow. Yeah. That's part of getting older. That's a good thing. It's just maturing. Truly, it's yeah. It's not bad. I can also, like, not stay awake past 2 a.m. anymore, so I'm definitely... I, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm definitely God. trying to be out of the club by, like, 1. <laughs> so what time are you in bed on a normal night? <laughs> this is gonna be really embarrassing i go to bed like probably oh well, i start going to bed at eight and then i'll probably like brush my teeth wash my face do that whole skin repair routine and then i'll lay in bed from like 8 30 to like 8 45 and fall asleep around nine hopefully yeah why is that embarrassing i um, love that because sometimes the sun isn't down <laughs> so yeah I don't know. I, what time are you up? Uh, I get up at four thirty. Yeah. Well, dude, I, I applaud you. Shit, <laughs> good for you, man. I very much so need my eight hours of sleep. Yeah. That's why you're fucking killing it right there. I'm trying. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So, what do you do in your free time? Oh, what is free time? Um. <laughs> Well, obviously, you and your, like, I get where you're coming from, but, like, you and your husband <laughs> got to have some time together. Yeah, like, we have an, uh, a weekly date night um, scheduled uh, where we either go to dinner, do, like, uh, uh, like a sappy walk in the park or something like that. Um, or sometimes I do, uh, like, quite frankly, anybody that, ever follows me on social media sees that I'm always at Black's Beach. Like Black's Beach is kind of like my go-to zen, like I need time by myself moment. Um, it just so happens to be like one of the most beautiful places here in San Diego. So I also did a lot of like Instagram content there. Um, but that's very much like where I go to lay out and not get a tan line. Okay. Yeah. Any other hobbies? Um, I actually just recently found myself like within the last three months, I signed up for a volleyball league that I'm kind of in love with. Uh, I love it. Um, and I haven't played since fucking 2010. Um, cause I tore my ACL playing indoor, uh, volleyball for a league when I was in the military. Um, and I hadn't played up until like four months ago, um, and didn't realize like how much I actually love it, but I love it. <laughs> it's so nice. much fun. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So those are kind of my 
go-tos aside from like doing the dog park or the dog beach um anything anything with my dogs is also a dream what kind do you have i have an airedale terrier and a doberman a what a doberman no no i i know what a doberman is oh. i didn't catch first. oh an airedale terrier the fuck is that um it's actually like the largest terrier of the terrier breed um it kind of looks like a labradoodle if you're familiar with that kind of style coat but it uh the body looks like a um if you know like a scottish terrier yeah yeah like think of a scottish terrier but 100 pounds and brown wow yeah so have you always been a dog person then always 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 i've uh grew up with like a little boston terrier that couldn't breathe because they have breathing problems and then um uh after he died i had a jack russell terrier and then that stayed with my parents and i joined the military and i got a little minpin um one of the gayest dogs i've ever had in my life um and then I got my Dobie, and she's been with me for 10 years now. You know what I'm asking? How tall are you? How tall am I? 5'9". Uh, yeah. hmm. hmm. <clears throat> the reason I ask that is because I know what you look like with your shirt off. Uh-huh. So I, I'm imagining you owning like a, a Chihuahua or a Shih Tzu or <laughs> I'm very something much a, like that. A big dog person. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I just, I could see you walking like a tiny little Chihuahua at the dog park. No, I, no, I could never. No, I need something that's going to cuddle me back. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Which is why I got a Doberman because they are the most anxious dogs ever. So, yeah, no, they're incredibly beautiful too. Oh yeah, truly. I mean, they're they're gorgeous, gorgeous dogs, and I hear they're very protective and very loyal. So yeah, they are. Yeah. So, is your husband done going to school then? Uh yeah, he just finished this year. Um, now he's working. Technically, I could quit at any time, um, and now it's kind of my turn to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. That was, in fact, going to be my next question. Yeah, I kind of felt it. <laughs> um, so I think I'll probably, well, I want to go back to school and finish my degree, so get my graduate degree in psychology, and then just explore that yeah maybe um because now that i've done sex work i definitely see like a lot of work needs to be done (laughs) for people in sex work or at least provide services or maybe i don't know help in some way but um yeah i don't know i i think that in doing like psychology or from what I've heard, maybe it's possible to do sex work and then transition to like that line of work. As long as you're no longer doing it. Yeah. It's not like a, a current kind of like, but I don't know. I may have fucked that away. I don't think so. Yeah. I would argue the opposite. I mean, there was a point in my life much earlier when I was looking for a sex therapist for some personal shit. Yeah. And I can say, at least in Denver, none of the sex therapists have a damn clue what they're talking about. I mean, yeah, nothing. Well, like, they're just, I mean, I had a... a human sexuality professor who didn't even know what prep was. Oh, wow. (laughs) I mean, if anything, I would say that your background in sex work and porn 
would make you a hundred times more qualified. Yeah. Just yeah. I just know that like, because, because like of the systems of our society here in the U S um, being very conservative in terms of like anti-sex work. Uh, I don't know. It's just something that I kind of am mentally preparing myself for to be told no. Yeah. And I'll just go from there. <sighs> yeah. Cause I definitely you don't feel like, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I definitely don't feel like I can do sex work forever, especially being like being 36, turning 37. Mm, there can only be so many Adam Russo, so many Austin Wolves. It's, it's limited. I don't know, dude. I think you could do it till you're 60 if you wanted to. But, and then that's like the other side. Like, do I want to when I'm 60? Do I want to be doing like this, all of this work when I'm 60? That's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. I'm just saying you, you have a look that will age well. Hopefully. Like you will definitely got the whole fucking daddy thing going. So okay. don't worry about that. Thank you. <laughs> We're trying. So like do you feel like that'll ever change though? Like society's view of sex work and all that? Cause mm. there's some days when I feel like, oh yeah, it's getting better. And then there's other days where I'm like, nope, just kidding. Yeah, it's definitely, it's by day, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I hope it does. Like, I can't, like, for me, I can't really, like, put grab or, like, I can't wrap my mind around why in America we're so anti-sex work in, but we are very much so, like, okay with exploiting someone's mind yeah like we are in terms what of like mean? whatever profession like you have to like like computer science or um uh, you know what i'm saying like it, it requires so much of your mind and thought process and problem solving and everything like that and that is okay ex but when it comes to like using your body to make money other than like personal training or um, sports athletes, um, sex is not okay. Like sex is regarded as something that should be like within the bedroom between a man and a woman only, only when married. And but those are the same people that still like masturbate to it when the lights go out. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, because there is, I just, there's certain things where it's like, okay, I can see their point on some, but then there's other things like, uh, for example, there's all this shit going on social media about a woman's body count. Like, oh, if a woman has a high body count, she must be dirty, or she's impure, or she's not relationship material, all this crap. And I'm like, what the, why the fuck would that matter? Yeah. The only logical explanation I can think of as to why that would matter is A, you got a really tiny dick, or B, you're fucking terrible in bed. Mm. So you're just hoping that she hasn't had enough experience to realize that about you. Yeah. Just my humble opinion. Um, it also kind of says to me, like, some, like, biblical purity, like, like, you don't want, like, the idea for a man that his wife is tainted is kind of, like, it's a jealousy thing, yeah, it's like a, like, I want to be the only one that she thinks about yeah I, I don't want to be compared to anybody in the past like I don't want to have that kind of pressure when in reality like there is no there truly is no comparison like um for me personally like sex with everyone is different and it's all kind of like 
that was a different experience. Like that was this experience and this is this experience. Like maybe I don't want to have this experience again, but that's okay. It's a learning experience in and of itself, yeah. Yeah. So just, and and I don't know. I mean, I've known a lot of gay men like that with that same, you know, mindset too, where it's like, oh, you're a porn star. Like you must be it, it's almost I don't want to say this. You're good enough to fuck or mm-hmm. watch fuck, mm-hmm. but that's it. You're not a person outside of that. Uh that I drives mean- me insane. I'll even go one further. Like you're good enough to watch fuck, but you're not good enough to pay to watch fuck. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but I mean, to your point, like I've had quite a few instances where I've been chatting with people online and they find out that I've done porn and they are no longer interested because why would I sleep with someone who is readily available to anyone, quote unquote, anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all about perspective. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that one up, the paying for your porn, because I've never had an issue doing that, but yeah, it seems like a lot of people do. And, you know, or I, I'm sure I actually, I'm not sure. I guarantee you've got plenty of DMs of people Oh, will you do this? Will you have sex with me for free? Will you, can we have sex off off camera? Will you do this? Like, motherfucker, do I look like the Salvation Army of dicks? (laughs) Seriously? Like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I, so for me, I don't mind having like sex, like casual sex, um, because I think it does kind of provide some mental, like, positivity for me like to not always monetize sex yeah not always not always so that sex is not always work does that make sense yeah yeah um but yeah a lot of people like assume because i do sex work that it's an automatic yes when truly i either don't have time or if I feel as though like I'm just a sexual object, then there's no interest for me. Yeah. Like I'm not a sex doll. Like unless you're gonna pay, yeah, but and even in that regard, like you have to pay my rate. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. No, but you're absolutely right. People look at you like a sex object. They're like you essentially become a dildo or a hole truly and just take in and out of the drawer and no regards for who Morgan is as a person, how you think, what you feel, what your needs are, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I get it. Like there are those instances where it's very primal and you're kind of just like wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Get in, get out, get off, whatever. Um, but in, in the vast majority of experiences, yeah, yeah, I kind of would rather feel like a person and I do try to make other people feel heard, seen, valued, um, cause that's what I would want. Yeah. What would you say to the people who, when you said, oh, they'll watch your porn, but they won't pay for it. Uh. Oh, I mean, (laughs) I get messages all the time saying how people like how hot some video is that they saw me in. And my first question is always like, oh, so you subscribed? And quite frequently, it's no, I saw it somewhere else. And I'm like, oh, okay, can you tell me where it was so I can have it taken down? And um, they either get like defensive or they tell me and they're like apologetic. but. I don't know. For me, I don't really feel like the apology is like authentic in that it's something that they're going to not do again. It is more so like, oh, I don't want to offend you because you might go on social media and da 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 da, whatever. Um, yeah. I 
I don't know. I don't really think that there's anything that I can say to those people in order to reframe their idea of watching the the free porn from like gay boyfriend tube or x hamster or whatever like is completely like wrong (laughs) because those sites stole that porn from like content creators or from whatever website um that was behind a paywall and yeah, you're taking away money from an actual person. Yeah. I mean, the thing I always ask people is, would you do your job for free? Completely, yeah. Like, and I've yet to hear a person say yes. Yeah, like uh, a plumber, uh, a fucking electrician, a um, repair mechanic, name it. Like any kind of um, industry position, like... Nobody's going to do it for free yep. unless you're your friend, but yeah. Exactly. It's like if you wouldn't do your job free, why are you expecting me to do mine? Yeah. That's always been my attitude. Yeah. But I mean that it, I don't, it's kind of like, did the chicken come first or did the, did the egg like with these porn sites, like not ever getting like, monitored or taken down or there's no repercussions for them like there's always going to be like a cycle of new porn on these porn sites yeah or old porn or whatever like they're always going to have content just because no one's monitoring them and people are just gonna go to what's free because that is our nature yeah that is so true yeah so one thing i was gonna ask you is how in God's name do you stay as cut as you are? I do a lot of cardio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> truthfully. Truthfully, like, um, I get this question all the time. And my diet is boring as fuck. Like, I eat oatmeal for breakfast. I have a protein shake after um, after the gym. and predominantly like my meals consist of rice chicken barbecue sauce and a vegetable like broccoli asparagus born like brussels sprouts kind of like boring shit and then every once in a while uh probably like a date night we'll have like pizza or i'll have ice cream or we'll go to like some pasta restaurant that we like or mediterranean or something like that um Everybody always assumes that I do steroids. Like, I've not done steroids since 2018. I just have done, like, this lifestyle for so long. And I know, like, what works for my body in order to cut and remain lean. Or, I mean, I could blow up tomorrow if I wanted to. I could just go fucking ham on some peanut butter M&Ms and (laughs) fuck it all away. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe in a depressive state, I will. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. So, ideally, in the future, you would like to become a psychologist and do some type of sex therapy or therapy for and it's definitely sex a possibility. workers that... It's definitely a possibility. Like that's something that in my mind kind of makes sense as like the next uh, or like what tracks in terms of like, how can I use this four year stint of work as kind of like something to move next to? Um, I mean, I've also considered doing nursing or uh, I just want to help people. If that makes sense, yeah. Like, whether it be mental health, um, physical health. um, I've also thought of doing, like, um, physical therapy. uh, Because I've torn my ACL twice now. Um, And Uh I love, like, I love the idea of, like, working out and muscle movement and kinetic, um, 
kinesiology um, and helping people get back to like a state of normal living, if that makes sense. Yeah. And all of those kind of like require some level of psychology within them. Uh, so yeah, something I just have to, I just have to find out what I want and not listen to whatever someone told me when I was in 10th grade said I was good at. So basically you want to make a positive impact. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody kind of wants to make a positive impact. Um, I think in today's society, we have this idea that we need to do something grand in order yeah. to leave a mark or have something to remember us by. But I just want to make the world a little better while I'm here. I like that. Yeah. So for anyone watching, where can they find all of your social media, all of your content, all that good stuff? Oh my God. So I made it super fucking easy um, for anybody. Like all of my on any social media platform, the handle is always, 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 always the same. Um, it is always more than thick. M-O-R-G-X-N-T-H-I-C-K-E. It is always that. Um, or you can just go to my link tree, like linktree dot or linktree backslash Morgan Thick. Or you can go to morganthick.com and find everything. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That's that's nice because most people I interview, it's like different for every fucking platform. No. So it's I like a five minute answer. I'm not even about well, mine was kind of a five minute answer in saying the same thing over and over again. But um yeah, it's just morganthick.com. M O R G X N T H I C K E dot com. Okay. Yeah. And how would for anyone who hasn't seen your content how would you summarize or describe it? Uh, it kind of depends on what you want to see. Um, but in general, uh, I'm just a queer person trying to explore my sexuality. So I can be a rough dom daddy or I can be a sub hungry bottom. Like it's just kind of like an array of fuckery. <laughs> Um, a lot of people have criticized me for being too many things at one time and not like niching myself, but truly like I'm exploring sex and I'm doing what's fun. So there's something for everybody. There's a little BDSM, like there's a little casual sex, there's a little outdoor, there's a little anonymous, there's some solo, there's some sports stuff, there's whatever damn yeah Impressive. it's a good time it's a good time okay not to pat myself on the back but yeah no i like it i i think it's important to appeal to as many demographics as possible yeah but that's just me yeah no same. seriously though morgan thank you very much for agreeing to do this yeah um, thank you for having me i've had a blast talking to you Great. And I think you brought up a lot of really, really good points. Oh, thank you. So um, don't go anywhere, Morgan. Uh, for those of you watching, just remember Morgan Thick on everything. everything. But it's G-X-N, not G-A-N. Correct. And uh, mine is just at Masculine Jason to everything. Um, if you're interested... Um, I will leave Morgan's link tree down below because that's the only thing that YouTube will let me link. Okay. Um, and uh, hey, guys, just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button. And on the left hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord. And I personally answer that it is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. 
I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos, the porn star confessions, the dom sub, all that stuff, it is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.